Hi YouTube friends! Today I'm going to show you an easy way to add extra flair and honor your sponsors or use any other logos that you want to use in your live stream. A lot of people have asked about how I did the sponsor rotator on my stream. If you've never seen it, it looks something just like this. It's really easy to create. We're going to use all 100% totally free tools. Anyone is going to be able to do it after they see this. So you know what? Let's get to it! We're going to use DaVinci Resolve in order to create this. And it's really easy to use and it's also totally free. There are links down in the description so you can download it and follow along. That is the best way to learn. So let's jump right in. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve and I'm just gonna go ahead and start a new project. I'm gonna go here to the editing page. Everything we do gonna be simple editing right in the editing page. And I'm just going to add my logos here. And obviously you're going to use whatever logo you want for this. So if you have sponsor logos or your channel logo or whatever, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to use just some logos I've got sitting around just to make life easy. And we'll start out with this one here and this one here. And what I'm going to do is when you throw these static logos on, you can see you get five seconds. I'm gonna increase this to 10 seconds. So basically you see how it says plus whatever. I'm just gonna go to plus five. So that should be a 10 second clip. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And I'm gonna start with our YouTube one. Go all the way to the far left. I'm gonna zoom it a little bit. And I'm gonna move it to the farthest left position that I want these to go. So somewhere like that. And there we go. So then I'm going to go ahead and start keyframing. So we're going to add a keyframe there. And I want this to make a full rotation all the way around. So we're going to end up in the exact same spot. So I'm just going to put a keyframe there. I'm going to expand this so we can see our keyframes right there and right there. So if we go to the halfway point, our logo should travel to the other side. So we're going to go ahead and move it over here to the other side at the halfway point. And now what we've got is the logo going back and forth. Perfect. So we're going to go halfway in between here and here, and we're going to bring this one to the front. So right around two minutes, 15 seconds should be the halfway point. And we're just going to zoom this up so it's big. And there we go. So now we've got there. And we can see our zoom on this one is 580. For some reason it didn't take the zoom on this one, which should be 580 as well. And we could just put the, put the numbers in. And there we go. So now we're gonna see it get big, go small. And there we go. So now, we want to go halfway in here, so that would be right around the 715 mark. And we just want to shrink it up a little bit, like that. We're just trying to give it the appearance of rotating. So there we go. We've got that one rotating. Now we're going to start out with our other logo. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom it. So it's about the same size as this one. I'm going to move it down a little bit. So we're about in the same position. There we go. Can maybe make it a little bigger than that. And I'm going to move it over. So it's in this far right position. And we're going to go ahead and start our transform right there. And we know that we want our final transform to be exactly the same. Let's go ahead and expand this. So we want that to be the same if as all the way at the end. So I'm gonna go to the end, go ahead and hit our transform. There we go. So now we could start to mimic. So when this is in that position, we want our other logo to be directly behind it. So what we can do is Go ahead and move it this way a little bit. 
and hide this just to see just to make sure we're getting to the right spot basically centered up right behind that and then we need to shrink it up a little bit and there we go so now we've got it going in behind there shrinking up and then we're going to come out here on the other side we're going to move it all the way over to this position here and we're going to set this to the same size as this one which was that 550 and just move it into the proper position and then we have one more right here we're going to go ahead and make this big like that to fill the screen and so now you can see we've got them going back and forth the only problem is that the YouTube one is always in front so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut and we're gonna cut this one and this one and we're gonna give us a little more space here and so right here is where our YouTube one would be on top so we'll just move it up and there we go so now we've got two logos rotating around one another this is going to get a lot more complicated needless to say we're going to go ahead and drag in the twitter logo here and we'll stretch it out all the way and since both of these start out on the sides we're going to start our twitter logo in the center what we're going to do here is select our twitter logo and we're going to add the transform to it our keyframe and then we're going to go here and we want our Twitter logo to be over there. So we're going to go ahead and move the position over there and shrink it down. And there we go. So now we can see that work in the way it's supposed to. We're going to go ahead and bring this down here. We know our next position is going to be right here. So we're going to move our position for our Twitter logo into the center. We're going to shrink it down even more. So now we've got that. We just need to go here and let's get a look at where our markers are right there and we're going to bring our position over this way and we want to get the same size as we had it right here. So we just need to look here. We're at 660. We'll go back here and we'll make it 660. Here we go. And then it looks like it's rotating around. And then, of course, this last one is going to be the same as this one. So I'm just going to control C, control V. We'll paste it right there. I'm just going to move it all the way to the end. So now we have our Twitch logo doing its thing. Um, of course, we can see that we've got problems because it's always on top. We're going to fix that, of course. But first, what we're going to do is go ahead and shrink up this stuff a little bit so we can make it easier to work with down here. And we're going to add our last logo right here. And this is going to do the exact opposite of what our Twitter logo is doing. So we know our Twitter logo, if we remove that, is up front first. So what I'll do is just move the Twitter logo up here like that and then turn this back on because it'll just make it a little bit easier and we're going to start this logo all the way in the back so I'm just going to go ahead and hit our keyframe and we're going to shrink it as small as it's going to go down like that and then we're going to go ahead and move right here and that is where this logo is going to move here and we're just going to embiggen it a little bit make it about the same size as our Twitter logo there and there we go got a keyframe there then we're going to move here and that is where this is going to be the featured logo so we're going to move it into the center and we're going to go ahead and embiggen it and there we go now we're going to move over here and this is where the logo is going to be on the right and we want it to be the same size as this one so let's go ahead and make sure so 460 move over here and we'll make it 460 and we'll just keep moving it over that way and so now all we need to do is put it back to its original spot so I'm gonna grab this one and we're gonna control C we're gonna move all the way to the end and then control V and we'll just move this all the way to the end and there we go so now we've got all of our 
logos moving the way they're supposed to move. So let's shrink this up a little bit and we'll shrink this up a little bit. Now we need to cut them so that they operate in a way that makes them move in front or behind the ones they need to move in front or behind. So we'll start with the Twitter logo and we're gonna go halfway in between here. This is where the YouTube logo should pass in front of the Twitter logo. So we're gonna go ahead and go to that point and we're just gonna cut right here. And then the Twitter logo will be behind, 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 behind and then it's going to need to come in front. I think that might be good. Let's try moving this first and then we'll then we'll see. So what we're going to need to do is we'll grab this Twitter logo and we'll move it down here. We're going to move this up. And so right here the Twitter logo is in front. So we're going to leave that up here and we're going to move this down here. So now the Twitter logo will switch and let the YouTube logo in front right there. And then it goes the way it's supposed to go. So that looks right. And we're gonna have to have the Twitter logo come in front of the other logo right about here. So we're gonna cut it again. And then I'm just gonna bring it up. So now we've gotta do the same kind of thing with this logo right here. So we know this logo is supposed to be in front right here. So right about here, it's going to change. So I'm gonna put my playhead there and we're gonna give it a cut right there. And it's going to do the same right here, I believe. But let's start out with this one. Here is where this logo is gonna to need to be behind these logos. So I'm just gonna move it down here and there we go. And this logo is also going to be in the wrong spot. So this is now just a matter of kind of jockeying for position. We're gonna move this up here. So now that's in front. And then here is where this logo needs to switch to be in front so we can move the Twitter logo up. And there we go, then it, then it ends up in front. All right, so so far we're doing pretty good. Right here, you can see there's a problem because our YouTube logo is over top of our Twitter logo. So what I'm gonna do is bump this one up and bump this one down. And this is kind of the little game you're gonna have to play to make everything work right. You could see the worst gamer on earth logo here should be in front of my YouTube logo, but it is behind. So we're good there and then it switches. Okay, that makes sense. We're in front and then we should have the Twitter logo move to the front right there. So I think where we're really missing it right here is the YouTube logo has to be in front of this one right here. So we start out right there and right here is where it should pop in front. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and we're gonna just put it below the YouTube logo, which is right here. I'm gonna move this up and I am going to move this one down here. And there we go. So now you'll just see it pop across, blop, and I might have moved that wrong. I did, I did. We'll move this up here, and we'll move this down here, and there we go. So now we've got our Twitter logo, and it pops the YouTube logo right there, and then when the YouTube logo pops right behind right there, like it should, and we're coming across, and then my logo pops in front of that one right there, and then the Twitter logo should pop in front of mine, right there, which it does. So now we can see how this works by just going ahead and rotating, putting it on autoplay, and there we go. Everything looks good. All we have to do now is go over here, and what we're gonna do is put our name for our file. We'll just put rotate in there. We're gonna browse to the location where we wanna save it, and then here, we want it quick time. We want our codec to be uncompressed. We want our type to be BGRA, which is for A is for the alpha, which we're gonna go down here and export the alpha. We wanna change our frame rate to the frame rate that we're using, which in this case is this one right here. And we're going to go ahead and add it to our render queue. And we're gonna render it out. It takes just a few seconds. 
and let's go take a look at the size of this file. So right here, this rotate file, it's kind of big. We don't need the file to be that large. So what we can do is use the shutter encoder, absolutely free, links down in the description, and we're gonna just drag rotate on there. And then what we're gonna do is select our function. In this case, we're gonna use VP9, and then we're gonna go over here to advanced settings, or advanced features, and we're going to enable the alpha channel. And that's all we need to do. We can start the function, and it's going to go ahead and create that, but it's gonna be a much smaller file size. You can see it's a WebM file now, and it's way, way smaller. Now that we've created it, all we need to do is add it into OBS. But first, I work really hard to try to create content I think you're going to enjoy. And sometimes I hit, and sometimes I miss, but it's really hard to know for sure. And that's where you can really help me out. If you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and leave it a thumbs up. And if it's not your cup of tea, it's perfectly fine to leave it a thumbs down. Now, if everyone watching this video right now left it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, I'm definitely gonna know whether this is the kind of content you wanna see. So thumbs up, thumbs down right now. Thank you very much. Let's get back to the video. All we need to do is add it to OBS. Let's do it now. Here in OBS, we just have a basic scene with a camera in it. All we're gonna do is click the plus. We're gonna go to our media sources and we can call this whatever. So I'm just gonna call it rotator. And all we have to do is browse to our source. Now here we have two different ones and we don't really necessarily know which one is which. One of them is the WebM and one of them isn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the details on so we can actually see. I'm gonna select our WebM version, click open. I'm gonna go ahead and loop it. Click OK, and there we go. That looks amazing. And it looks even better when we just make it a little smaller. Now you can use any logos for this. So your logos might be looking better than this logo, might be looking worse. It really depends on how you set it up. If you get interesting logos for your sponsors and all that sort of stuff, it can look really good. A lot of these logos are kind of the same color. So it ends up maybe blending in a little more than it should, especially since my background is blue. But you can change up the color of your background or you can have this any way you want. So if I were to shrink up the camera or put something else behind it, maybe over here I have my chat and then I just have this logo going over top of the top edge of it or something, that would look better. So there are so many different ways that you could set this up to make your stream look cool and to honor your sponsors. And when sponsors see that you're making an effort like this to feature their stuff, well, you're probably going to pick up more sponsors along the way as well. Pretty cool stuff, totally free to create, and not all that difficult, just a little bit of fiddling. I told you it was easy, it's totally free and a lot of fun, and there are so many other things that you can do once you learn how to add keyframes into video sources. I mean, once you get this down, you're going to be able to create all kinds of custom alerts and everything else for your live streams, which is a lot of fun to do. Is there anything that you think I might've left out of this tutorial or you have a question about something? Well, let me know about it down in the comments and also let me know how you're going to use your logo spinner because I'd definitely like to hear about it. And if you want to see how you can create custom alerts for your live stream, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next one.